Superhero Stuff You Should Know is part of the Greenlit Podcast Network. Hey, this is Ben from Superhero Stuff You Should Know, and I have an important announcement for you guys. At the end of every single episode of Superhero Stuff You Should Know, you might hear a shout out to our fans, one of whom is Matt Herring, who was one of the original Superhouse fans. He's always given us his support, and now it's time that we support him. Uh, we've just recently found out that Matt has been diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer. And as a cancer survivor myself, I know personally that there's a lot of emotional and financial strain that comes into that. Uh, his wife, Kelly, has set up a GoFundMe account at GoFundMe.com slash F slash Matthew hyphen kicks hyphen cancer 039 S hyphen butt. Uh, and hopefully you can help reduce the financial strain to that as well as some of the emotional strain that comes with that. Again, that's GoFundMe.com slash F slash Matthew dash kicks dash cancer 039 S dash butt. Matt Herring was the first, I guess you could say, true Superhouse fan. We were Superhouse at that time. You know, the first fan of this podcast and what we do here and um, has always supported us, talked about us, and um, he's from a town close to where I'm from, and uh, so we share that as well, and just a huge superhero fan, and, you know, nerd like the rest of us, and now he's going through that, and uh, if you could donate just at least any amount of money to that link that Ben just said, that would be truly appreciated just hang in there matt you'll beat this thing soon my son my son now it's time to teach you the greatest lesson of all and that is how to take a poop in the ocean i'm i'm not really your son but and i don't know what this has to do with crime fighting and protecting atlantis but okay i'll go with it Garth, just listen to me real quick. You're going to pull down your, your green short shorts and you're going to pop a squat just exactly very similar to how you would in the woods. But you can actually turn sideways in a swimming Swings. position. Like this? Like this. And then let her rip. But you want to then swim out of there as fast as possible. You can kick it into Nemo's That's mouth for all I care. I think. Arthur, what the hell are you doing? Oh, hi, Volko. Volko, I'm glad you're here for this momentous occasion. I, I am here teaching Aqualad how to take a poop in the ocean. It is the greatest gift a father can give a son. Dear God. You know, I put up with this whenever it saved the universe from Steppenwolf, but this is one step too far. He's just a boy. You don't want to teach him these bad habits that you've taken on yourself. Uh, actually, Volko, I already shit in the ocean. Volko, let me get this straight, my man. You don't take any shits in the ocean at all. Poseidon's beard, no! So you just hold it all in? We clearly have Atlantean toilets. They're labeled, there's signs outside of them. What are you doing shitting in the ocean? We are not fish. You can talk to them, but we're not fish. Civilized, we are a civilized... Society, now get over to the restroom like a normal fish person. I think it is perfectly natural for us to shit in the ocean, just like the landlubbers shit in the woods. It's very much the same thing, as long as you swim away quickly so as you not get any of it in your own mouth. It can get in Nemo's mouth, but not in your own. Arthur, you are royalty. You are the king of Atlantis, and I'm here to tell you, I don't know where you were staying at on land, but not, not everybody above the sea level is shitting in the woods. They have toilets up there, too. I, I, I've i been there. Remember, I got on the beach and trained with you. There was bathrooms. I saw them. Volko, you really, you haven't had a whole lot of land experience, I think. People take a lot of shit in the woods, my man. Aqualad, how are you feeling about this beautiful father and son experience right now? Well, I mean, Volko's pretty wise. I don't know who's right in this situation. Should I shit in the ocean or should I shit in the restroom? Aqualad, listen to me. Don't listen to Aquaman. Look at him. He's a bad influence. He's got dreadlocks and a beard and tattoos. And he looks like he might smell a little bit. So look, just listen to your old uncle Volko. And have some pride in yourself. So, 
you don't want to take part in this lesson with me at all, with, since, since you don't shit in the ocean either. I think this is important survival skill, man. Also saved us once, obviously. Yeah, I want to save the universe too, like Aquaman. That's my boy. That was a fluke. I don't think that happens every time. I mean, how are we going to send them to public school if you're having them do this? It's just something that I, I, I can't abide by. Better to be able to poop in the ocean when you don't have to than not be no. able to when you have to. You see what I'm saying? You smell what I'm stepping in. You sound like you've been smoking too much of that sea kelp. Well, that is true. All this duty talk has got me... Uh, I think I might have to go, so... Look, I don't see any bathrooms around here. I'm going to have to swim back to Atlantis to do things the right way. Aqualad, are you going to come with me? Or are you going to drop trowel and lay a sea turtle right here next to Aquaman? Well, the reason why I'm being so quiet is that I already did. Oh, we got to swim now. Go, 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 go. I've never been so ashamed in my life. Welcome, everybody, once again to an episode led by me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Andrew, everybody, and this is... Uh, this is Ben, usually the man who knows too much about Batman wearing my Wayne Enterprises shirt, but today I'm taking a back seat and uh, enjoying this deep dive into... Where are we going? Man, you're the man that knows too much about Batman and too little about Atlantis. Indeed, so I'm going <laughs> to... Do my bat research and listen and find out the bat about the home of Aquaman. Indeed. The bat tutelage has begun, which is uh, Momoa tutelage. <laughs> no. <laughs> and this week we have a very special guest, and we're going to cut to our interview with her right now. And then after that, we'll get to the rest of the episode. So for now, here is Dr. Christine Schreier. All right, everybody. This time we have a special guest. Dr. Christine Schreier. Yes. She And uh, please give us your credentials because I just thought it'd be better if you said that rather than me. Sure. I am a PhD in linguistic anthropology. And so I uh, teach at the University of British Columbia, Okanagan. And yeah, I'm a linguist and a language creator and an anthropologist all mixed into one. So yeah. Awesome. And... Uh, she, Dr. Cr Dr. Schreier was on a previous episode where we went over um, Kryptonian, so check that out if you haven't already. She created Kryptonian for Man of Steel, and we sort of broke a story at the time, thanks yeah. to her. We were on a few <laughs> blogs here and there, uh, because it seemed like nobody knew that, didn't you say Russell Crowe recorded a scene in Kryptonian? Yes, he did. More, th I think more than one, but it never made it to air. And I, you're right. I think you broke the story because after that, I saw that news come out in many places. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it yeah. Was new news, and I was like, "What? That's, mm -hmm. that's news? I didn't I don't, know that was news." I don't think anybody knew that, so that was oh. cool. Yeah, I don't think that was reported yeah. beforehand. Yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. So it was Kryptonian, but also we talked about Eltarian, the Power Rangers language. Which yes. Was also, I think maybe the first interview I'd given on Eltarian too. So. I forgot about that one. Yes, Eltarian. <laughs> they're working on a new Power Rangers movie. Oh, I hadn't heard that, actually. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do with it, but, you know, we'll see what happens. It's still way in pre-production. Mm -hmm. oh. But, uh, yeah, you might get a call again. You never know. It depends uh, <laughs> where it's set, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. I, I've heard mm -hmm. it's going to be set in the 90s, but and not much El Eltar stuff. But, anyway, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But no one knows yet except for the writers. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. So um, what was it like working with Snyder? Did you work with Zack Snyder at all? Did he just send you emails or how? what was that uh, like? No, um, this time I worked with him more, actually. So we should also say that there's a new thing. <laughs> Maybe you've already talked about yes. it. Um, yes. So for Atlantean. <laughs> yes, yes, um, yes. Yes, I was in direct conversation with him um, as he was finishing off post-production uh, because he always had this vision of having an Atlantean language for um, the scene with Mira and um, the guard, I guess. I don't know if he has a name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so they always had this vision and he had talked about that early on that it would be dolphin-like. And so <laughs> I had Zoom calls with him. I think for this, I had two Zoom calls. Uh, cool. the, 
Yeah, it was cool. So it was, and he'd be, always be like, oh, I got to get back to the editing and other things um, <laughs> yeah so the first one he kind of described what he wanted and then I went off and and developed the language and then this was the funny thing um, and then we had I sent in the recordings and my documents and things and then he got back to me and he said that's great Christine I really like what you've done but I forgot to tell you we've already filmed these scenes and their mouths aren't moving <laughs> so oh, can you make man. a language where their mouths don't move mm. I was like yeah, I think I can. <laughs> so wow. that was that was the most interesting part of this production for sure. Wow. All right. So, uh, so to clarify, then this is last year when he's already shot all the footage from 2016 right. or so. He is in the edit bay for the HBO yeah. Max uh, release, and this is when he contacts you, and that's right. why we run into this issue because of the fact that this is from footage from yes. years ago. This is for our, our audience. Yes. Got it. So okay. I think. If he had continued on, it's very possible he would have reached out to me at that point. But of course, Josh Whedon took over. And so I was never contacted. Josh Whedon didn't have that vision, I guess. And so when he was doing the mm. HBO Zack Snyder version of Justice League, that's when he reached out. Okay. All right. Uh, ben, you get, you get the next one. Uh, well, we were wondering if there was any Atlantean that was cut from the movie, similar to Man of Steel. However given what you just said about how they kind of had to match the footage that they had, that seems to kind of already answer it, unless there's something else that uh, we don't know about. Um, no, I think I think it just matches what's there. I'm just trying to think. Um, sometimes the what, what was there, the lines changed, if you know what I mean. Like at first it was, mm -hmm. go off and do this, or, and, and then it became um, sweep the perimeter. Or like it was a longer version of that, like the first line. It's funny too because no, I didn't realize that there would be no subtitle subtitles oh. for this. Right? And so <laughs> nobody knows what they're saying. I should be making this up, right? Um, and I, I guess. Well, you would know right, better than us. So originally it was you go do a sweep of the perimeter, and then it got shorter to kind of match the mouth movements. Um, so that was interesting because then it had to change a bit, which that happens all the time. Wow. That's gotcha. awesome. Well, I don't think anybody knew what the dialogue was until no, just now. No, and there's, there's so, more. That thank was you the for first that. line. That's what she says. You, sweep the perimeter. So, gotcha. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Is it? you think it would be possible to uh, put those translations online at some point, or is that uh, against NDA? Well, I, mean, I don't know. Is it? Not necessarily NDA, but it's um, work for hire, right? So now I've given this to Warner Brothers, and they have to have it um so you know maybe in the future we'll be able to include more um the, i don't know if i've talked to you guys since uh the kryptonian the fans have been going wild with kryptonian and they have a whole google doc um where you can see full translations of the whole quote of the suit and um fan, whenever fans come to me and say is this right i'll correct it and i'll, I'll get the kryptonian out there but for this there's not really a way to do mm -hmm. that because there were no subtitles if there were subtitles fans right. would be right. figuring it out did you write, uh, did you create text too? For this one, for yeah. 19? Yeah. No, this okay. was all, all oral. So um, yeah, just the sounds. There was no writing system for this one. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right. Just wondering. Yeah, they call it, I've seen them, them refer to it as Schreier Kryptonian, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. that's true. Okay. So what are the main linguistic features of Atlantean? Mm-hmm. Well, there's quite interesting things in here. Um, so I'm just reading from my document because it's been a little while. So yeah. uh, I did talk to Zach early on about what he wanted it. And definitely underwater creatures were an inspiration. So especially dolphins. And so I looked up a lot of YouTube videos about dolphins um, squeaking and making different sounds. But I've actually written, so I do a lot of my academic work on um, constructed languages and I'm in a a book called um, Teaching with Invented Languages. And I wrote a chapter in there with another linguist, also a language creator named Nathan Sanders. Mm. And in that we talked, the chapter is called The Interdisciplinarity of Conlangs. And in my section, I actually talk about Kryptonian and how my students have made Kryptonian words. That's one of their assignments. I give them the linguistic details. Awesome. Yeah, so you can see a lot of non-canon words for Kryptonian in this chapter, um, which I don't <laughs> know if people know either. There's a whole bunch of non-canon words out there. And then uh, in my colleague section, Nathan, he talks about how his students, when they're making languages, 
they do things with different underwater sounds or physics. And so he talks about underwater languages and uh, bird languages. So if you have like the neck of a bird, what sounds could you make? And so how does that impact this? And so I looked at this underwater physics section that Nathan had written, um, which talks about how sounds travel differently through water. And so um, it, they would have lower vowels so okay. if, if you talk about e it's really high in your mouth but if you say ah it's lower so there is that and then fronter they're more to the front of your mouth so ah okay. as compared to ooh. Okay. so the vowels in this are very front um they are e a and ooh, uh, a version of ooh, but like closer to the middle of your mouth ooh, like that okay yeah, so that was a little bit about that. Um, and then consonants, uh, very limited consonants. So I have a nasal, n, and a click, and a glottal, <laughs> which is a little pause, right? Like if yeah. you say, uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, underwater, yeah. you're not going to have a lot of, you don't want things that are using a lot of your air because you're underwater. It's going to create bubbles. Right, um, right, right. So very limited consonants and more of these um, ah sounds at the front and a. Yeah, there's no glottal stop in English, really, other than uh-oh, right? I mean, yeah, not, not much. In, not in uh, American, North American, Canadian, or American English, but in uh, British English, you have things like buttle or buttle. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Japanese has it as well. I've studied Japanese, and right. yeah, it's 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 all over. And I, I, apparently Hawaiian as well. Um, I'm sure you know yeah. that. Actually, yeah, actually, Hawaiian was also an influence. My first version of this was very Hawaiian feeling. Like okay. Like you have a lot of uh, sounds, but then those require moving your mouth more. So, ah, okay. but you can say n and without, I, I did a bigger mouth movement there, but you can make a click without moving your mouth. And okay. so when I redid it, I made a video of myself saying all of the lines without moving my mouth. So Zach okay. and Snee, <laughs> that nice. I wasn't moving my mouth. Yeah. That's cool. Nice. And so then all the, um, the syllables are quite short too. They're all consonant, vowel, vowel, consonant, vowel, like very simple syllables. And there is a dip song. There's ow, ow. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So now you can go and listen to those things <laughs> out there. So that's a little bit about the sounds. So that was um, translated, the ah, uh -huh. uh, and the, all the sounds you talked about, that's translated into dolphin trills, basically? Yeah. Uh, well, they also did uh, post-editing effects. Uh, ah, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah. So the actors um, would speak the sounds, and then in post, they changed it to sound more dolphin-y. Okay. All right, yeah. cool. Yeah. All right. Um, the other thing is the sentence structure. So this one yeah. in Kryptonian, uh, we talked about how it's subject, object, verb. This is subject, verb, object. So just like English, uh, simple. Like So for anyone who knows English, it's simple for them. I got to tell you, that blew my mind when I first started studying Japanese because I didn't know that languages were could be like that. Like a, in Japanese, the verb is always at the end, mm -hmm. which is actually the most common grammar structure on the planet, right? Yeah. And then SVO, like English and Chinese, is second most common. But yeah, I, this it blew my mind. And then to find out there's VSO. So Kryptonian was VSO, right? So verbs always first? No, it was subject, object, verb. Okay. Just like oh, yeah. Japanese. So ja oh, so Kryptonian was like Japanese. Okay, I yeah. gotcha. Okay, interesting. All right. Yeah. Cool. For some reason, I find that fascinating. The least, the least occurring naturally is <laughs> OSV or something that happens in some Amazonian languages or something like that. I thought it was OVS. Or OVS, maybe? Yeah. Which is what we talked about this last time, I remember. Uh, oh, yeah. Klingon. <laughs> Klingon. Klingon was made to be a, the, yeah. the most alien. Yeah. Yes, because it's the least, least naturally common. occurring. Yeah. Yes, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. All right. Sorry to take up so much time, Ben. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, no problem. Uh, I guess the next one I had was, you know, even though a lot of people know the Schreier Kryptonian, that was not uh, spoken in Man of Steel. So now that this is spoken in the Snyder Cut of Justice League, how does that feel or does that feel different from how it felt when you worked on Man of Steel afterwards? Right. I think it does feel different and because I feel like fans wanted Kryptonian spoken. I've heard so much from people and it's I'm very mm -hmm. pleased with how it turned out, especially because of the, the funny issues of the cut that it was already filmed and we had to do something kind of unusual with the language creation. So right. very pleased with it. Um, 
Since then, I have had languages spoken. So in Power Rangers, Altarian was spoken. And then I did another film, which I couldn't talk about the last time I was here, yeah. uh, which is Alpha. Uh, yeah. And the entire film of Alpha is in a language I made. So yeah, so it's, it's interesting. It's I've learned actually that um, I don't get credited when it's not spoken. So that's interesting. Uh. Um, otherwise, I'm considered like a different scale. So I am credited in uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, but I am not credited in Man of Steel in the actual credits, although I am in many other things. Um, okay. So that's an interesting piece too. So it's nice to have the credit this time. That was what yeah, <laughs> I was like, sure. yeah, that's, that's a little pat on the back to have the credit. I was credited in Alpha too. Altarian was mm -hmm. a different situation altogether due to the I contract. Hope, I hope you get credit for, yeah, the whole movie in that language. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have so to. That is a language that you think that um, early man spoke, or what was that again? Yeah, so Alpha is set 20,000 years ago in oh, Ice Age Europe. Yeah. And so the idea is it's the Cro-Magnon language. So like the first anatomically modern humans, what they would have spoken. So I took a lot of linguistic research on what we know about the earliest languages. Proto-languages is what they're called. They're like the ancestor languages when you have... Um, families and then they jump back and we kind of estimate what a language would be like and so I used research from that to make this language which is called Bayama okay that's before Proto-Indo-European I guess way yeah way before Proto-Indo-European although that's a, an, a relative of it okay man yeah. that's 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 crazy. I haven't seen the movie yet. I need to see it. <laughs> you should. It's very visually beautiful. Like that is the thing beyond the language uh, that I love most about Alpha. The scenes are stunning. It's, okay. And the, the dog, if you're a dog fan, uh, the dog in that, um, his name was Chuck. Uh, oh no, was it Chuck? Yeah, Chuck. He was a, um, a wolf dog uh, ah. who, passed, who passed away a little while ago, but he was the great, um, great actor. You know, no offense to Crow Magnon people out there that are not alive, but it's not just it's not just grunts and stuff. It's no, like, no. So. Although that was a debate. So for yeah. Alpha, I actually made there was a scene that got cut. There were there were two scenes that got cut where so this I should have said the story is about a boy who gets separated from his tribe during a bison yeah. hunt. He gets left for dead. It's in the first five minutes of the movie, yeah. um, pretty much, and then he has to make his way home and he befriends a wolf. Uh, which is why it's called Alpha. That's so it's cool. the story of domestication of dogs. But um, oh, in his return, he is supposed to run into Neanderthals and some other random hunters who are not his people. And so I made three languages mm -hmm. for that oh, movie. Shit. I made Neanderthal, Jeez. which got cut. It's cut all the time, uh, guys. So, and also this hunt, it was mm. called the Huntress language. Um, yeah, so that was interesting. But, but they originally just wanted the Neanderthals to grant. So I was like, uh-uh. No. Oh, really? That's not interesting. Not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something not PC about that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. That's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. I, that That is cool, though. That not, not many people cover that. I'm surprised yeah. I haven't seen that. That's, some, that's shit I'm into. It was, it was kind of a letdown at the box office when it was came it? out in 2018. Well, it was kind of niche, and um, yeah, I think it didn't make as much money as they wanted it to. So, yeah. Good reviews, though. Yeah, it is a really mm. good film. Uh, back to nerdy linguistic yes, shit, so. but uh, <laughs> why did you choose SVO just because it was going to be uh, subject, verb, object like English? Is just That's just because it's going to be already hard enough doing dolphin trills and shit? Why not? Well, why make it any harder? Uh, yeah, I guess I I don't know if I had a really good reason for this one. Uh, I did do interesting things with the prefixes. So the verbs are not like English. They're marked for who's doing what to whom on um, the verb uh, so that it shows with a little prefix. So if we say um, the first line actually that I have here is we must stay vigilant. And then it's got yow, yow is the prefix that means we. And then you is something else entirely. Um, it is oh oh. So um, yeah, so I did interesting things with verbs uh, rather than changing the sentence structure this time, or at least I thought they were interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the other thing I should say was yeah. a tonal language. So oh, is if, it? Yeah, like Chinese. So if you say um, ah, that means air. Well, ah means with, for example. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which is like, there were so few words. I didn't really get to play with that that much, but I did do it a little bit. One of the lines Mm -hmm. um, was, let us use the old tongue of air for security, which I think got shortened down, Um, but which is why I have the word for air. The old um, tongue of air. Oh, because the they used to be they used to be on land. Atlantis used to be on land. Yeah, yeah. So that's right oh. before they make the bubble, right? They yeah, say, yeah, yeah. She says, "What news do you have ah. from King Orm?" Yeah, uh, yeah. And then let us use the old tongue of air for security. So then they make the bubble, which I think is a really important line that people should know. That um, is cool. That's cool yeah. mythology. That is important. Yeah. yeah. So the word for the old tongue of air is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Clicks. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Sweet. Anyway, <laughs> tonal awesome. languages. I, I was, yeah, I was curious about any of the other lines that yeah. you had worked on or had done that we either don't know from the movie or that uh, you could just tell us that might have been original lines before things got yeah. changed. Um, so that's one of them. And I think, I think that line is still fully there. Um, they're said so quickly, right? And then they're post-edited. So, um, and mm-hmm. then she says uh, to the guard, his name is Kudal, Kudal with me. And then he says, yes, commander. And then she says, go look. Yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's an exclusive for those who were yeah. wondering what they were yeah, saying exactly. during the movie because there's no <laughs> subtitles. <laughs> right. Which is, the story I mean, right open. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I don't, I, that was a choice, right, that Zach made to... Um, you know, make it feel more authentic to how you're viewing being there, I guess, right? But yeah, I don't know. That's awesome. You mm-hmm. So yeah, you made, you didn't make like a full language with a shitload of words. You basically made the language just for these lines. Right. Is that basically yes. how it works? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you can expand upon that later. Yeah. If so, yeah. if I'm so uh, inclined, who knows? Maybe I'm teaching that class. I'm teaching my class on language emergence, which is called language emergence from contact languages to constructed languages. And this is the one where I've made my students do Kryptonian words in the past. They could choose. They could either write about that or write about something else. So maybe we'll do Atlantean ones. This yeah. <laughs> Give them the phonology for clicks and things and see what they come up with. What what do they need? Mm-hmm. What vocabulary do they need? And then of course it's non-canon because my students make it. That'd be awesome. I'd be interested to see right. um, if you made text at some point. That would be yeah. cool, because you did that for Kryptonian, right? Right, so the there was a graphic designer who did the actual design of the text, that was Kirsten Franson, but I came up with the system for the syllabic text. They were already doing like the S means hope and Zod's shield mm-hmm. means, um, what does Zod's, I think it's destruction or I can't remember Okay. Uh, what his shield means, but. That's something. cool. Yeah. Like, 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 like the, S, the S is that. hope and then yeah. Zod's yeah. is destruction. I should check. Because it does that. have a trust yeah. symbol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I should. I should probably double check that. I, it's something. And maybe it's not destruction. It's something like. I don't know. Opposite something, of hope. Yeah, the despair. opposite of hope. Despair. It, <laughs> there is. Because remember, everyone. I don't know if you remember this. Did you do this? Did you get your glyph creator name where you could go oh. and get your own symbol? Are you kidding me? I was all over that shit. Yeah. So. <laughs> I was. I was. All, I made my glyph. I went yeah. to the site. I was insane about Man of Steel. It doesn't work anymore. It doesn't oh, work is the anymore. site down? The site stopped working about three or four oh, years. I can't make mine oh, then. Oh, Ben, you missed out. Warner yeah, Brothers, heed, heed our call. Yeah. I know you producers <laughs> so that I can do it. to this. Right? <laughs> Um, I used it for years. Like I would give presentations on Kryptonian, and then I'd like mm-hmm. pu- cu- ask them for a volunteer in the audience and like get them their shield and stuff. Um, but it can't; it doesn't work anymore. But that was we couldn't use whatever Zods were. So when we were making what the meanings of all the house glyphs were, uh, Kirsten designed them, and then I came up with like the words that would go with them. So I yeah. do remember one. Okay, this is an inside scoop. There is one: the House of Ron. Did anybody have the house? Ron. Do you remember what yours was? Emmy? I honestly can't remember. I did it like a lot, yeah. but I don't. I don't <laughs> you probably I don't had remember. five different glyphs. I probably did. Things. Yeah. Um, the House of Ron was uh, persuasion, okay. and um, it was definitely persuasion. And I can't remember the other word that went with it because it was from my father, whose name is Randy. So it was Ron, which is the Kryptonian version, and he's the salesman, and he's very persuasive. Ah. So that's why it's the House of Ron. Wow. Um, anyway, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, it's great. That's when awesome. It's personal like that. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. We 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 probably talked about this last time you were here, but 
You have a you have a favorite. Is it still Navi? I think Navi was your favorite last time, or your Khan Lang, a constructed language. Oh, one, the one one that you've done out of the ones you've made. Yeah, so I didn't make Navi. Okay, that was yeah, Paul yeah, yeah, yeah. Frommer, but right, I right, did, right, right. Yeah, I started research. Um, but the reason I got here was because I was researching Navi speakers and how they were learning the language and how other communities whose languages are endangered might model them because they they acquired many speakers very quickly. Um, and I still love Netby, um, but of the ones I've made, I might have to say Bayama because I've made so much uh, for that one for gotcha. Alpha. So there's 2000 hmm. words. You can have full conversations. <laughs> um, That's although cool. the the fans, the Kryptonian, that you know, the Man of Steel, Justice League fans, they're they're the best fans. They're wonderful. Like when it was announced that I was brought back for this, like the love I got on Twitter was amazing. So they're the best fans for sure. You're saying that Superman fans are just very nice and cordial and Absolutely. full of hope. Yeah, it's full of hope. <laughs> Cheery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, well, and just, mm. um, there's two in particular that I work with on language stuff. So Ray uh, is a person on Twitter who developed the Google Doc, and then um, Dave uh, Sorokin, um, Gecko-chan is his uh, Twitter name. They are the ones who find the Kryptonian and translate it all. So they are to thank for any um, translations that are out there. So they're, they're very fun to work with. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, one more thing before we uh, get you know let you go, but uh, I, I just now that I have you here, I, I just want to know real quick. I'm sorry, everybody. Ben, feel free to cut me <laughs> off any fucking time. By the way, <laughs> I, I don't know what depends anytime, on what you're going to ask. But <laughs> the the Altarian, did that ever catch on from the Power Rangers movie, or like, is there a fan base for that? And not, not really, really right? yeah. no. And and to be honest, I don't know if people know that that I did it as much. Um, like it was, it was not. I was not credited. I wasn't in after special, you know, like the Blu-ray scenes, which I was for many of the other things. So I don't even know if people know to come to me. Every once in a while, I get like one email out of twenty emails I get from fans. That's about Eltarian, but not really, which is kind of a bummer. So one of the podcast co-hosts uh, at the time. He uh, he's not a Power Ranger fan, but we all saw the movie. For uh, I'm a fan, but he, you know, he's not a fan, but he saw it for the podcast. Mm -hmm. And those were his favorite scenes because he likes. It's just it was just like the most sci-fi and the most kind of like it kind of mm -hmm. delved deepest into the mythology of the whole thing. Yeah. And uh, I th always thought that was interesting. But those scenes were really cool. So they were, and I yeah. would say. It was a great experience working with those actors because yeah. that was that I, they brought out of all the things that I'll you know they, they didn't credit me in that you know gives me a little bit of yeah. but um they did bring me to set and so i got oh to, that's good yeah i got to be there for and i was actually like when brian cranston was filming his lines rather than having the stunt double i was the one who would say the reader oh. repulses lines back so then that's I got hot. to have these conversations and I, you know, <laughs> was that the, when he was zored on in the wall, you yeah. know, um, I got to be there for the green screen part of that. So I was on set for the entire time of his filming, which was really cool. That so, is sweet. That's awesome. Yeah, because I didn't get to go, I was on set for Man of Steel. Um, I didn't get to go to set for Justice League. Obviously it was a post uh, production thing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get to go to set for Alpha because I trained the actors too oh. well. They didn't need me on set. Oh, wow. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, which is good. Mm -hmm. We got really into it. Um, so I didn't get to do that. So still Power Rangers getting to go to set and actually hear the language and work with the actors was the best. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Well, that does make me want to ask though, do you, uh, forgive me if you covered this already, but who then did the sounds for the Atlantean in the movie uh, that we heard? Right. So, good question. Um, good question. Yeah. So there. There were three people that I worked with. There was the male guard um, who had one line, yes, commander. So I <laughs> just worked with him quickly. And then there were there was a voice actor, Amanda um, Troop, I believe is her last name. Um, and then Amber Heard. So I did get to work with oh, nice. Amber as well. And they did Amanda they, first because we weren't sure we were gonna be able to get Amber. And um, mm -hmm. so I did record with both of them and trained them in advance and then was there when they were doing the actual recording uh, in the sound booths. Gotcha. So the actors we saw on screen are actually doing it in post. 
Just wanted the to verify that. The actors we saw on screen are doing it in post. Um, like, I'm not sure the guard. The guard was a voiceover actor. I don't think he was. Yeah. Okay. Right. Gotcha. Okay. But Amber. Heard. Yes, Amber Heard did do it, and I believe okay. they used hers. Um, because nice. she was the one who was in the scene. Uh, although I'm not sure Amanda mm -hmm. knows that. Sorry, Amanda. Um, and I'm not 100 percent sure. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> It's going to be hard for some people to yeah. tell, I think, it, in terms of recognizing the voices. Yeah. Dolphin trills. Yeah, but they both, I know they both recorded, I worked with them both to record, and I think it was Amber that ended up being the one, because she was obviously the face, so, yeah. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Well, this has been awesome. Um, as everybody can probably tell, and you already know, I do have an interest in, an amateur in, uh, interest in linguistics, so uh yeah i like talking about this and it's cool with the the con langs i've never really taken the time to learn any in depth uh but uh i like i don't know i like the i like learning about it though um but yeah so uh thank you for coming this has been My great mm -hmm. and uh hopefully we can uh, do it again sometime i would ask you about aquaman 2 but i think you're probably <laughs> Even if I did, it would probably, you, you wouldn't tell me anything, so. <laughs> My lips are sealed, yeah. I'm, I'm going to skip that one. Um, but yeah, thank yep. you for coming. This has been awesome as always. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, it was really nice talking to you guys again. I love that you're so enthusiastic about it. So thanks for having me on the podcast again. All right, so let's get into it. Usual disclaimers. I'm not a historian. This is just for fun. Um, and that's basically it. We're going to be going over Atlantis and not Aquaman specifically. You probably show up a little bit here and there. I'm leading this episode, as you can already tell, usually Ben, like we said. And we're doing a deep dive into Atlantis. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to use the joke twice. All right. So, <laughs> um, and yeah, we're comparing the actual mythology and conspiracy theory shit because there's more of that than there is with than there was with Themyscira, right? So mm -hmm. it's kind of an interesting aspect to Atlantis and, of course, the DC Comics side as well. So let's get into it. All right. So um, the first thing is let's just start off with the basics. Atlantis in mythology. All right. Actually, you know what? Before that, Ben, how much do you yeah. know about actual the actual Atlantis mythology before we go into this? Uh, mainly that it was a city and then apparently it ended up into the ocean. And that's right. there's a bit of debate on whether or not it's real. So okay. that's pretty much the extent that I know. And I imagine most of our listeners are pretty much the same way. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's the gist of it. Um, but let's get more into the weeds of it, into the, the kelp of it. All right. So <laughs> it's uh, Greek in origin, just like Themyscira. All right. Um, that was a, one of the few threads that was similar, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Atlantis in ancient Greek translates as the island of Atlas. Okay. Mm. I didn't Makes know that sense. at all before going into this. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know there was an Atlas connection. Yeah. Um, it is a fictional island mentioned in an allegory on the hubris of nations in Plato's works Timaeus and Critias, wherein it represents the antagonist naval power that besieges ancient Athens, the pseudo-historic embodiment of Plato's ideal state in The Republic. The, the Republic is a famous book by Plato. Right. Look it up. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of like stuff that could be its own episode that we're going to mention like once. A lot of shit the like philosophy that. majors listening to this are like, we got it. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> um, all right. So in the story from Plato, Athens repels the Atlantean attack unlike any other nation of the known world. The attack was unlike any other nation. Uh, and then the story concludes with Atlantis falling out of favor with the deities, with the gods, and submerging into the Atlantic Ocean. Plato said Atlantis existed about 9,000 years before his time, and that its story had been passed down Damn. by poets, priests, and others. Plato's writings about Atlantis are the only known records of its existence or the first at least um, really so it all stems from this guy if he didn't if Plato didn't have this then we wouldn't know about this at all that's correct um, and uh, I was going to get to this a little bit later but no one really knows if Plato made it up they don't know what it's based on is it oral tradition <laughs> uh, you know there's 
there's like not much to go on there. Uh, so it could just be Plato made all this shit up. It's not out of the, I mean, they made fucking Zeus and shit up, so. Um, or it comes down from Proto-Indo-European traditions that was eventually culminated into what we know as Zeus. Uh, mm. But anyway, yeah. Um, they should have Bill and Ted go back in time, but then take Plato this time and then have him go to 2018 to watch Aquaman. Exactly. See what he thinks about that. He'd probably be like Socrates and Bill and Ted. Like, he also loves Atlantis. Yes. <laughs> He loves superhero movies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you never know. Um, okay. So, Atlantis has become a byword for any and all supposed advanced prehistoric lost civilizations and continues to inspire contemporary fiction from comic books to films, as we all know. Um, and, uh, yeah, the other major thing is Atlantis sunk. It wasn't always under the ocean. Mm-hmm. It starts out as a continent and then it sinks because the because of the gods basically, um, and that's that's the version of mythology. That's the version in DC and also the it's in all the versions. It's in fucking the conspiracy theory, all of them. So, mm-hmm. um, and part of the conspiracy theories which I thought were funny was Atlantis was swallowed up by the Bermuda Triangle. Atlantis just became Antarctica, moved by <laughs> tectonic plates or some shit. Uh, it's a little much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what happens under the ice? What will we find? Um, yeah. So, uh, and an actual reason in, in, for the, in the mythology for its sinking uh, is uh, I found this from an historian named Orser. Uh, I forget his first name, his or mm. her. But uh, it said, The legend of Atlantis is a story about a moral, spiritual people who lived in a highly advanced, utopian civilization. But they became greedy, petty, and morally bankrupt, and the gods became angry because the people had lost their way and turned to immoral pursuits. As punishment, the gods sent one terrible night of fire and earthquakes that caused Atlantis to sink into the sea. All right. Wrath of the gods. You don't want to mess with them. Wrath of the gods. All right. Yes, you're right. Um, Not wrath of the titans. Wrath of the gods. Exactly. Titans are different. All right. So um, we talked about the Greek, uh, the Themyscira's location. We're going to talk about this here. It's You think it's in somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean, and that's generally the consensus. But also uh, most of the historically proposed locations are in or near the Mediterranean Sea. Mm. Um, so, uh, and near islands like Sardinia, Crete, Santorini, you know, shit that was close to Gre- Gre- uh, Greece, ancient Greece, right? And modern day Greece, I guess. Uh, so, uh, in the comics, Atlantis is located in the North Atlantic Ocean. Like, maybe somewhere on Iceland? I'm not really sure. I don't think, I think it's probably ambiguous hmm. on purpose, but it did say yeah. North Atlantic. Uh, hmm. So, okay. yeah, nowhere near the Caribbean or uh, Brazil or whatever. Uh, so, uh, yeah. And I couldn't find anything on the exact location of Atlantis in the movie. Um, yeah, they probably want to keep that mysterious. Yeah, I, I just assume it's North Atlantic Ocean just like in the comics. I mean, mm-hmm. it's Atlantis, Atlantic. It must be that, right? Yeah. Um, so, checking in. Before we uh, proceed further, Benetavius, thoughts so far? I was not... Uh, I did not know about the Plato connection in terms of that being the only source. It doesn't surprise me that he's a source. I just didn't know that he was the source yeah. on this. And so yeah. it is it is funny where he's just like, I was just making that shit up. <laughs> you guys, he's laughing at all the conspiracy theorists. What if this shit so just who knows fell what the it could ocean? Be. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I think that's... Uh, it makes sense to me that it's not something where you don't know the location because it, it adds to the mystique of it. Some, same thing with right. Themyscira. I think it, it would lose that if it's just like, oh, yeah, no, it's just it's literally at this point longitude and latitude. latitude. Yeah. So uh, I think that's that adds to the mystery of it. So I, I like that aspect. Cool. All right. Yeah, I, I didn't know it came from, like, this one guy either that was new. Mm-hmm. And I was also surprised that... Well, I shouldn't be too surprised, but I just assumed it was in in the Atlantic as well, but in or near the Mediterranean Sea actually kind of makes sense. And then, like, was the Atlantic Ocean named after 
Atlantis in some way or Greek in some way. Yeah, like, there's that connection too. Yeah, which word comes first in history? Uh, mm-hmm. That's another thing. Got to trace the etymology of that. But and of uh, course, Atlantis yeah. has King Atlan. <laughs> He's the yes. one leading them in, in Justice League in yes. the flashback. So you got that. It's like, is he? Did he come first, and then the Atlantic is after him as well as Atlantis? Yes. I, How egotistical was he? Because he got an ocean, and he's got Atlantis named after him. <laughs> yeah, they always say I. Uh, well, it's usually with Aquaman. Aquaman, but he's like, I rule three fourths of this world. Yeah, he yeah. does though. Yeah, that makes him badass. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so moving forward. Atlantis and conspiracy theory, and we're gonna go over some bullshit Nazi theories, everybody. Because that's <laughs> great. There's a lot. Of, there's uh, the Nazis loved uh, fucking Atlantis. Um. So, <laughs> uh. So yeah, for the Nazis, the Atlanteans were Nordic supermen, who originated oh, in the northern okay. Atlantic, or even in the far north. Again, complete, obviously bullshit, but. Is this why Aquaman has blonde hair and blue eyes in the original comics? You know, I don't know about that. I hope, I, I hope not. It was Strange a, connection here. It was a good change to, to Momoa. Uh, yeah. So, the scholars Carl George Jascht. This is a hard uh, German name to pronounce. Mm. Jascht. The spelling is Z-S-C-H-A-E-T-Z-S-C-H. Okay, so bear with me on that one. And Herman Wirth, or maybe Wirth, uh, were the first to speak of a Nordic Atlantic, Atlantean or Aryan Nordic master race that spread from Atlantis over the Northern Hemisphere and beyond. <laughs> so they loved mythology too. Um, <laughs> it doesn't surprise me because I know that some of the. There's like an Indiana Jones story or a proposed script, something about Indiana Jones versus something about Atlantis, which makes sense because he's an archaeologist, but I imagine he's fighting the Nazis in that too, just like in the first and the third Indiana Jones movie. So okay. uh, there could be that connection there in those stories. I haven't read them. Uh, if it is because there's novels and then there's scripts for what was going to be Indy 4 that didn't turn out to be Indy 4, so I don't know which one it is. Right. But there's definitely some sort of Indiana Jones Atlantis story that they were going for, and it makes sense with this. Right, yeah. Um, all right, so the next one is uh, Edgar Casey. Do you know anything about Edgar Casey before I go forward? No, it doesn't sound familiar. Yeah, so it's pretty much, they call him a clairvoyant. He's this popular figure in conspiracy theory circles I'm okay I'm interested in conspiracy theory stuff personally but I don't really believe in any of it actually I hate a lot of them <laughs> I I think it's fun for a mythology mm-hmm. my love for yeah. a mythology uh, also uh, kind of like not a love for conspiracy well it's kind of a it's kind of the same thing but I know they're both myths I you know what I mean I don't put yeah. stock into them but I like the creativity okay also, they're old, so it's like even if you do believe in them, it doesn't affect a lot of stuff for today, as right. opposed to believing today's conspiracy theories. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. It's slightly different, yeah. but there are neo-Nazis mm-hmm. and shit. But, but yeah. Um, that too. Okay, so Edgar Cayce is a clairvoyant. Uh, he uh, spoke frequently of Atlantis. During his uh, life readings, he claimed that many of his subjects were incarnation, reincarnations of people who had lived there. Um, by tapping into their collective unconscious, collective consciousness, the Akashic records. That's another thing. That's some you know insane conspiracy <laughs> theory shit. But anyway, uh, he said that he was able to uh, give detailed descriptions of the lost continent. He said that Atlantis would rise again as well. We're not talking about the South and America. You know those fucking crazy guys. He said Atlantis would rise out of the ocean again. Lots of crazy shit. And we'll have more from him in a minute. But uh, moving on from there, there's another famous conspiracy theory website that one of my favorite, po- well, it is my favorite podcast, last podcast on the left. They, they often reference this website called Bibliotheca Pleiades, and it's just full of nonsense, but some of it's great, <laughs> yeah. and you're going to see. Okay, mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, it says Atlantis, so th- according to Bibliotheca, Bibliotheca Pleiades, Atlantis was, a, was actually a large continent which spread all the way from Eastern Europe to the Eastern Seaboard of North America and into and south into Africa. <laughs> it's fuck it's fucking humongous. 
it does make some sense because in a way I'm like, well, how large is Atlantis anyway? Because we're talking three quarters yeah, of the ocean. Yeah, yeah, and that's why it makes so, sense for 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 Antarctica as well. I mean, size. And then you wise. got the Seven Kingdoms. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the mythology of the of the DC universe at least. So I'm like, okay, right, I can right. kind of see. It seems like way too big at first, but then they're like, oh wait, that does make a lot of sense. Yes, exactly. Um, so uh, going deeper into the conspiracy theory again, this is from Bibliotheca Pleiades. Again, total bullshit, but you're gonna see some fun conspiracy theory not so shit right now okay you ready <laughs> this is why i like this shit lay it on me <laughs> okay to trace back further into the origins of the atlantean civilization we need to go back to the time of the decimation of mars and maldek somewhere around a hundred thousand years ago as described earlier it was many other survivors of this conflagr conflagration escaping the embattled planets before the one was destroyed and the other made virtually lifeless who came to planet Earth and were then responsible for the founding of the Atlantean civilization. So, according to this complete bullshit nonsense, the Atlanteans are descendants of Martian refugees. <laughs> Which means Martian Manhunter <laughs> is family with Arthur they in got, some way. They got... <laughs> Yes. Why has this not been explored, DC? Why has this not been explored? Dude, just fucking DC writers go into Biblioteca Pleiades. It's fucking nutso and great. So, so There yeah. was a, con not a conspiracy theory, but a fan theory at one point that Snyder was going to connect Kryptonians to Themyscira and Atlantis, even though that's not at all what happened. So I don't think that's, that's what happened. I think it was a fan idea that, like, because of the fact that there was that scout ship earlier in Man of Steel that said that, hey, Kryptonians came to Earth. Right, 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 right. They said, "Hey, Kryptonians came to Earth." They're like, "Hey, what if they came to Earth in ancient times, and then uh, the women were on the island, and the other Kryptonians are down below in the sea?" So I was like, "That's interesting." I don't know how I feel about them all being connected to Kryptonians, though. But it, it's, I can see some vestige of this conspiracy theory feeding into that fan theory. Right. Yeah. I think our, all, like the comic writers and the fans are. are checking this stuff i don't think that i'm alone if you like comic book shit that's obviously fake and conspiracy theory stuff that's also fun and should be fake you know what i mean for for these people you know what i mean well, only, a hell, few, like, only a few only a few if you go ahead go ahead go ahead. If, if you if you ask me to do an aquaman story i would not only look at the comics but i would also look into all these just see what type of fun shit could i do with this Dude. that hasn't been done before so this is one of those things yeah, yeah, it's great. It's fun. It's it's, but there's but the problem is, at least for me, is that a lot of people. Not well, I don't know about a lot, but like there's a probably an alarming percentage of people that might believe this stuff, a uh, hundred percent. You know, well, you also have to believe it's a double thing for you to buy because not only do you have to buy Atlantis, but you have to buy Martians coming to Atlantis. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big part of the conspiracy theory shit. Is that Mars was an Earth-like planet and it got fucked up, and I, you know that Martian Manhunter stuff. I think some of that, some of that Maybe. like uh, bullshit conspiracy theory stuff, is part of Martian Manhunter's um, backstory. I'm not sure, but I think there's well, yeah, probably some crossover there. Destruction of his planet. Yeah, I can yeah. see where you're going with this. He's kind of a Martian refugee, so yeah, I can see that. I just wasn't expecting an Atlantis connection. Yeah, I know. That's unexpected. Martian refugees. <laughs> oh, shit, man. It's great. Okay. Uh, anything else before we move on? What are you thinking about this crazy conspiracy theory shit? <laughs> Just think about the Martian Manhunter of it all. Yeah. If those were to be connected into the DC universe on it. So obviously they haven't. Or if they did, it's a more obscure story that I don't know about. Let us know in the comments below if I'm wrong about that. But... Yeah, no, it sounds it sounds insane, but that's exactly why we're covering this. Because I think it's more interesting to, to go into what people thought of Atlantis that's even outside of the DC Universe. Let us know out there if you guys uh, have read the comics, or if you're knowledgeable of, uh, you know, them talking about ancient Atlantis and Martian Manhunters, like, I know what happened. You know, I was there, or, <laughs> you know, some sort of, yeah. like, uh, their relationship, or his relation... He's, well, Aquaman's too young for Martian Manhunter, I guess, but... <laughs> Uh, you know his his uh, 
um, ancestors. Well, yeah, yeah. Martian Manhunter has been on Earth for supposedly centuries. Right, right, Maybe right. even thousands of years, right. depending on which, which version you're going with. So I, I can see him sort of knowing what they're talking about. Right. All right. We, uh, everybody was here probably for this mainly. Atlantis in the comics. We arrived, everybody. So Sweet. In DC Comics, Atlantis is an aquatic civilization appearing in American comic books. Published by DC Comics, associated with Aquaman. It is one of many versions of Atlantis in DC. Okay, well, there's a few versions uh, of Atlantis. Of course, it's been Rebirths and fucking New 52 and Final Crises and all this kind of shit. Uh, so anyway, the version of the city... Uh, the first Atlantis in the comics is in Adventure Comics number 260. That was in May 1959. was created by Robert Bernstein and Ramona, Ramona Fradone. Do you know Fra- Ramona Fradone? Fraden, maybe? Uh, doesn't sound familiar. Okay, she was... What? She's like... Was uh, an artist. And um, she was the first... One of the first, like, uh, woman artists in, in comics. And they gave her Aquaman, maybe because he wasn't, like, a top-tier hero or something, I assume. But she has really cool, like, vintage kind of... Well, it's vintage now, you know, but, like, cool, like, old right. old art. Uh, old kind of old Aquaman yeah. art. So check it out, Ramona. Fraden, maybe Fradone. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so Atlantis is an ancient sunken kingdom in North Atlantic, like we said. Actually the size of a continent. Um, one of the earliest and most highly advanced cultural and magical societies on Earth. Um, and we can't bring up Atlantis in DC Comics without the mention of Peter David's run entitled The Atlantis Chronicles. And guess what, Ben? I have read this one. <laughs> I, read, <laughs> I read this one. I was working on Aquaman. I have not. <laughs> it's, it's sort of a deep, sort okay. of a deep cut. But How are they out? They live up to the hype. They live up to the hype. They're cool because it's way before. Uh, it's well, mm-hmm. it spans up until Aquaman and the rise of Aquaman. But it's like people say Got this it. a lot now, but it is kind of like the Game of Thrones of Atlantis, sort of. Like you're dealing with the kingdoms, and there's no Aquaman in the beginning. This is this is like just Atlantis dealing with Atlantis shit. So mm-hmm. um, it's worth a read just for that. Um, so yeah. Got it. Um, yeah, and I feel like uh, awesome. our uh, you know, eagle-eyed listeners or whatever, longtime DC fans probably would shake their heads if we didn't mention this. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, multi generational story of early Atlantis, well before Aquaman was around, and then goes into the time of Aquaman and uh, just the Amazon um. Uh, description for this book uh, reads as Aquaman the Atlantis Chronicles deluxe edition tales of Orin and Shalako Shalako their descendants and how a once great civilization rose and fell like the tides producing heroes and villains and culminating in the birth of the man who would grow to become the king and champion Aquaman. When the continent of Atlantis was struck by a meteor, the surviving cities of Poseidonus and Tritonus used an unusual combination of science and magic to protect the people, while King Orin had faith in the science that let his people thrive underwater. His brother, King Shalako, rejected science in favor of worshipping dark powers, settling, setting up a conflict that would mark all who followed. Only Aquaman can resolve the clashing of the two cities. Okay, and we will make that comic our Amazon link in this episode. Superhousepod.com slash shop. Check it out there. And then uh, we will go further into those two locations, Poseidonus or Poseidonus and Tritonus and more after the break. Hi, I'm Ray, and this is my friend Alex. Hi. And we do a show called No More Whoppers. Some call it corn, we call it therapy. We're adults with the virility of men. Want to hear us read snack food copy and talk about Japanese chips? Too bad! Join us every month or so on the Greenlight Podcast Network. A dream to some. A nightmare for others. Indeed, wizard. Would you like to see my grotto? (laughs) 
I, Merlin the Magician, would like to see any grotto from a fellow wizard. Then right this way, my good man. <laughs> Here it is. It's my... You can see my coconut farm, and you can see little birdies flying about. You know, you're the first person I've shown that really enjoys seeing the inside of my cap. It is a refreshing feeling indeed. <laughs> it's hard to find people who don't look at you all weird. I have to find other wizards. Yes, I was wondering though, where would you, where'd you get that bowl on your head? You, you, you where's your pointy cap? What do you live in? Do you live in the salad bowl? Well, that's the thing. I'm friends with a man named Jay Garrick, who's the Flash. And he advised me that the best thing to do to wear on your head is a salad bowl, because if you ever get hungry, you can just take the bowl off your head and eat. What about the salad dressing residue that falls upon your crown? Don't be a fool. I'm a wizard. I can get rid of the entire dressing. Just with a snap of my fingers. And a whisk of some Kleenex. Oh, yes, that too. Indeed! Are there people living in your cap as well? Uh, no, just the food. I don't really need to have people live in my cap. Wow, indeed. I have Camelot for that. Oh, Camelot, I've been there many times. I spent the winters of 1673 there, and it was absolutely wondrous. Yes, yes, thank you for that. I was probably in the cellar somewhere. Well, let's head on into the living room. If you if you don't mind me asking, yes. indeed, wizard, what magic do you actually do? Indeed magic. I thought you knew that. I'm indeed wizard, I do indeed magic. Pardon my French, but what the fuck is indeed magic? Well, it's basically, I can say any word or phrase or sentence... And if I just say indeed at the end, it's going to happen. Like the spell, there it is. Wait, so you're basically a regular wizard. You just say indeed at the end. That's pretty much it. Some people say abracadabra or some shit like that. Me? It's indeed. A wave of the wand as well. You need the wand, of course. But I say some bullshit, wave the wand, and then say indeed, and then... Spackly spoo diggly doo, there it is! Spackly spoo diggly doo. I've not heard that one before. Well, it's maybe before your time. Before my. I'm the oldest wizard of all time. What are you talking about? I don't know about that. Are you saying you're older than me? I'm. I'm from the beginning of time. Motherfucker, I'm from the beginning of time. If you were from the beginning of time, you wouldn't put a fucking ball on your head. I didn't have the ball on my head in the beginning. It's an evolution. You were testing my wizardry when you wear a ball on your head. At least I have a cap. And I live in it. Who the fuck lives in a cap? Go get a real hoe. Fucking wizard, that's who. You know what? I don't... Get a real fucking castle. I don't like you being in my cap. I'm... I've changed my mind. You... I'm sending you out. Spackity spoo, a dickity doo. Indeed. I will let myself out. Abracadabra goo. <laughs> Fucking stupid ass bullhead wizard. No wizard of self respecting. Who is Merlin? Most famous wizard of all time. Piece of shit. Indeed, wizard's the best wizard of all time. I'll tell you that much. Indeed. All right, everybody, if you like that little preview to the sketch right there, we have that plus news. Plus, we're bringing back some opinion pieces and uh, review type stuff and all kinds of stuff in our $5 tier on Patreon. So just go to patreon.com slash superhero stuff pod. And if you become part of the $5 tier, you can see these new bonus episodes. Basically, consider it Superhouse DLC. Let us use the old tongue of air for security. All right, so let's get into those regions of the DC, of DC's Atlantis now. All right, you ready for this shit, Ben? I am. You seem like you kind of knew about this shit. A little bit. Which part? You know about Poseidonus and uh, Tritonus? Uh, not at all. But it said Poseidonus, and I was just like, yeah, I was suddenly reminded of the comparisons that Grant Morrison have of uh, the Justice League to the Greek gods. And of course, Aquaman is obviously definitely. Poseidon. Okay, yes. All right, gotcha. All right. The long hair and the the long hair and the beard also help with that. Definitely, yes. <laughs> they're not they're not hiding it. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Superman is Zeus and all that. So okay, mm -hmm. 
Flash is Hermes. Okay, so Batman is Hades. Exactly. That's the that's the badass shit. All right. So Poseidonus or Poseidonus. I like I like both pronunciations. But anyway, named after the Greek god Poseidon, of course, capital city of the continent known as Atlantis. Geographically, it lies right in the center, and it has a, the neighboring city is Tritonus. Tritonus. Both mm-hmm. cities are connected via a network of subterranean tunnels. So under underground, under the ocean, it's really fucking deep. It makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Um, Aquaman maintains his base of operations in Poseidonus. His secondary headquarters, however, Ben, is the Aqua Cave. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. <laughs> Does he have a giant penny in there, too? Yeah, I think so. It's turned green from the fucking water. <laughs> <laughs> that would be kind of awesome Arthur actually. this looks disgusting <laughs> as he comes in my man I love the green alright <laughs> so yeah um, so yeah there's an aqua cave um, the royal palace of all Atlantis was located mm-hmm. in the heart of P- Poseidonus and it has the seat of power for all the rulers for all of the millennia that they've been going the salt processing plant is there which, you know, it's a factory or whatever, but seems to be a big deal in some storylines. It's their main export in Atlantis. Salt yeah. um, makes sense, you know, I guess. Um, what else would it be, you know? Um, so uh, some of the, oh, this is a funny one. This is another funny thing I found from the comics. This is another like jumper kind of thing. <laughs> okay. Um, some of the salt refineries were, were destroyed when a race of giant jellyfish who laid seed to Atlantis, Atlantis came. <laughs> Okay. Yes, there was a jellyfish invasion. <laughs> it was a serious attack that came from a race of highly evolved giant jellyfish. <laughs> These creatures despised the notion that the seas were dominated by the humanoid Atlanteans and embarked upon an ambitious plan to ensure racial purity in their territories. <laughs> Wait, so the jellyfish are looking for racial purity? Because Atla- because the Atlanteans are humanoid. They're not pure fish. Got it. Okay, I see where they're channeling here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Themes abound, don't they, mm-hmm. Ben? Yes. Okay, so uh, the next city on our list is Tritonus. Tritonus. In contrast to the human-like Atlanteans of Poseidonus, the people of Tritonus are mostly merpeople. Tritonus was devastated in the crisis, of, crisis on Infinite Earths, but was rebuilt non, not long after. And there's a shady character there named Firtf. F- what? I, F-I-R-T-F. He's from there. That's a whole other topic we could go into, but I'm just gotcha. going to leave, leave that for now. <laughs> um, so King Triton from The Little Mermaid is dead since Crisis on Infinite Earths. That's what you're telling me. I think so, yeah. Gotcha. Se- Sebastian killed him finally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. The next one is uh, Venturia. There wasn't a whole mm. lot on this one, to be honest with you, but the, it is associated with a character named Queen Clea. And Queen Clea okay. is this character that enslaved the men of her realm and amused herself by putting many to death in gladiatorial combat. Jeez. Uh, yeah. And she uh, repeatedly attacked the sister city of Orania. That's one, not one of the main cities, mm. but uh, yeah. That's the main stuff about Venturia. The next one is Shayeris. Shayeris? I'm going with Shayeris. Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. Uh, it was the ancient capital of the Hidden Valley, realm of King Thar. After his murder, it became the base of the Aedilus. Aedilus. Something like that. Mm. And Garth is from Shayeris. Aqualad. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, interesting. Poor Aqualad. Yes. Yes. So, uh, and just a quick uh, aside on Garth. He was, he's Aqualad. He was born to a lost tribe of the purple-eyed Idolus. He's the son of King Thar and Queen Bera. Uh, and the Idolus are a purple-eyed pacifist faction of Atlanteans who chose the seclusion of the Hidden Valley. And they are known for ranch dressing. No, I don't know. I... <laughs> I, there's too many side tangents. I didn't do any research on Hidden Valley. So, but but yeah, let us know in the comments if we missed a big thing there. We give you ranch dressing and you are ungrateful. This is yeah. Aquaman to, to yes. Earth. yes. Okay. 
So <laughs> next on the list, um, well, okay, those are the main four. All right, when they, mm-hmm. when you bring up Atlantis, these are the four main uh, districts of Atlantis. But there's there's others they talk about. There's the city of Dagon. Uh, it's an Atlantean nation founded by Ocean Master, made up ah. of Atlantean mutants and outcasts from Atlantis, notably the ninth tribe of Atlantis. Uh, yeah. Orania, as mentioned earlier, they're a small Atlantean city-state ruled by a matriarchal hereditary monarchy. Okay. Uh, hmm. During the 1940s, the city was under repeated attacks by Queen Clea, like we said earlier, of Venturia. And uh, Wonder Woman actually defeated Queen Clea uh, eventually in one of the runs. So, yeah, there you go. Lemuria. This is another thing in the in conspiracy theory and, and shit like that. This is um, not just in the comics. But Lemuria is another sunken, lost city. Uh, and there's not a whole lot on it. It's not, not even nearly as popular as Atlantis, obviously. But I thought it was worth bringing up. Um, and the D- DC's wiki didn't really mention a whole lot about Lemuria. But... It sounds familiar. It talks about Lemurians a little bit, and it says mm. the Lemurians are a scientifically advanced race of blue-skinned humanoids, and they're covered with large green scales. So blue skin, but green scales. Okay. Gotcha. And um, the Young Justice Wiki also mentions Lemuria, says it's a city-state within Atlantis. That might be where I've heard it. Yeah. Because and- there are a few episodes in Atlantis. Okay, cool. It says, according to purists, it is infected with what they consider impure Atlantean. So there's a lot of like race, a lot of race shit going on here. <laughs> Jeez. With it, with it, with Aquaman storylines. I guess it makes sense because he's got the whole "I'm half Atlantean, half human" thing. It 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 is a little bit like that. I mean, it's yeah, yeah it's like you a fish out of water. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, uh, but being of two cultures, uh, yeah, that that's just uh, mm-hmm. that's a part of it. Also the kind of like racism from the Atlanteans to the to the uh, land dwellers you know they bring that up a lot too they see themselves as superior and shit like that so that too yeah yeah so that's that's a part of it I guess okay so uh thoughts on this Ben the casting that does make me see the uh, multiracial casting of Jason Momoa in having his dad be Tamara Morrison and his mom be Nicole Kidman. That all that also sort of visually reflects the fact that he's from two worlds. Not just if he, because in the in the comics, it's just like okay, cool. It's just another. It's it's Aquaman. You can't. There's not really a visual sign that he comes from two worlds as opposed right. to someone who is who is multiracial, where you're just like, yeah, he comes from multiple worlds. And right. I do remember them playing around with that a little bit in the Aquaman movie, or at least addressing that the fact that he's not full Atlantean. Right. Right. Half. Right. Uh, so that's definitely an aspect that I can see playing thematically. Uh, and then I just, this is, this is why we're doing this episode because, because I love the fleshed out ideas of like the different cities that we've seen over the years and all the different stories. So uh, right. I think it's great. I think it's awesome. Yeah. I was surprised just to know how uh, fleshed out the city of Atlantis is, but I probably shouldn't have been this surprised because isn't everything fleshed out at this point decades of comics you know you gotta go with something yeah yeah so makes sense aquaman's gotta do something somewhere in atlantis and yeah people love world building so it's three quarters of the world too so yeah it can't just be literally his kingdom the entire time right right and also the aqua cave let's not forget that all right, let's talk about that. <laughs> this is the first I've heard of this. <laughs> There's the Arrow Cave. There's the Aqua Cave. Is there a Flash Cave? Like, they all have caves. It is funny as hell. There's, there's not a Flash Cave, but the Aqua Cave does make some sense because of the nature of being underwater. So I, yes. can, I can see that. It rolls off the tongue well, too, Aqua Cave, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's fine. I mean, it's funny. I mean, there's a lot of humor, a lot of humor inherent to comics and how silly... You know, Arthur, do you have a single original idea? <laughs> That's what Batman says hey, to uh, Hey, check it Oliver. out. Check it out. It's okay, man. <laughs> what do you think? It got, looks exactly like mine. I got a I got a giant squid here instead of uh in, instead of the uh the dinosaur, man. What what about that, huh? I guess that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Atlantis in the movie. Mm-hmm. James Wan 
said, Atlantis is kind of scary, but I didn't see, I didn't set out to make a horror movie. I mean, that's not what this is about. It just so happens that you're dealing with a world that is magical, beautiful, but at the same time, scary as hell, right? People are terrified of the ocean because they don't know what's down there. I want to capture the fear that we have of the ocean, the scariness, but at the same time, the magical and wonder that comes with it as well. And I think he succeeded in that. He did. I mean, he has a horror thing going on in that as well, you know, with the trench with and the all trench. that. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Um, also, in the movie itself, Mira said uh, Atlantis is many wonderful things, but forgiving it is not. And Poseidonus and Tritonus are the two areas shown in the film, apparently. Ah, gotcha. So they were Makes sense. They were used. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. All right. Um, that's all I have. I mean, there's, pro there's probably a lot more, but those are the main quotes from, from Juan on, mm -hmm. on the movie. And, and he's probably got a shitload of quotes about Aquaman, but those are the main quotes about Atlantis itself. Specifically, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I would say that in terms of differences between Juan and Snyder, you've mostly, I mean, some of it is the designs and the armor. Yeah, right? Volk yeah. has got a very different look yeah. in Zack Snyder's Justice League versus the one in James Wan's. Do you have a preference, I guess, in terms of which Volko look? Uh, I do kind of like the armor in the Zack Snyder version. I was like, yeah, he actually looks pretty cool. Not like he didn't look cool in the other one, but still. For, for Volko specifically? Yeah. Well, Volko's look fits that movie, um, mm -hmm. but for, for Aquaman, well, it fits both their movies. Um, yeah. I did like him in Snyder's Justice League. He was pretty cool in that. And his hair mm -hmm. is more like, it's like, it's more, it's, it's tied it's like back. Down. It's in yeah. a, it's in a bun, right? In, uh, in, in, in Wands. Movie, yeah. 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 So, I mean, I like both. I'm not one of those man bun haters out there. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> there's, there's, there's surprisingly a lot of those. I don't do it myself, but but anyway, um, I like both. I mean, I don't. I like Aquaman's armor in Aquaman more than what he wears in Justice League. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, that obviously makes sense because he's he dons the armor of the true king. He dons the actual Aquaman colors yeah. in that movie. Yeah, which that's makes true. Sense that's true. Actually, yeah, you're right. You need to have that. You need to make that his arc. So I can see, I don't know if Snyder was deliberately planting that where he's just like, well, he, he only has a quindent, not a trident yet. And he's not yes. fully in the, in the orange and green. And then Juan's able to give him the trident and the orange and green. So I think, I think that ended up working out, even if it wasn't completely intentional. Yeah, I think so. Actually. Yeah. A lot of people made fun of that, but like character arc wise, it makes a shitload of sense. You know, mm -hmm. he doesn't fully take up the mantle yet. Um, I will say again, just because we're talking about Aquaman and Atlantis in this episode, going from bro to king is a great character arc. So everybody that talks about he's too much of a bro mm -hmm. uh, in the in those movies, it's like, yeah, sure. But like, I, I hopefully in Aquaman two we see him in kind of like. He wants to go drink a beer, but he or some shit, and he can't because he has kingly duties or something. Like he just, mm -hmm. maybe he hates being king. You know, like right. we're let's we're just gonna have to see what happens with all that. And then he sees just how much responsibility he has and has to has to keep up with. Gotcha. You know what I mean? I think it's yeah. it would be a great be great good. character arc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So Atlanteans myth versus DC. Let's talk about the actual residents of Atlantis in a little bit more detail. We're going to, uh, once again, compare the okay. myths, conspiracies, and comic book versions. So, let's start off with the comics versions first this time. And the, D the DC Atlanteans, they are the native race that inhabit the continent of Atlantis. And they're not to be confused with the Mer people. <laughs> they, are se <laughs> they are separate. This is uh, part of the comics. Mm -hmm. Uh, the modern Atlanteans are descended from both human and homo magi. <laughs> Magic people? Yeah. So, like homo sapien, Got this it. is okay. homo magi. Zatanna, this. Yeah. Zatanna is homo magi. That's why. That's, that's where I heard it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all uh, Atlanteans in DC Comics are, of course, amphibious, and they have super strength uh, compared to humans and... Um, 
all of that. Mm-hmm. Like Aquaman's probably even more so, but all of them, because they live under the ocean, all of them have mm-hmm. some sort of super strength. And super swimming, of course, and all that. Right? Okay. Right. The conspiracy Atlanteans. Let's go into that now. <laughs> So I remember growing up hearing a little bit about this uh, from, I can't even remember who, but people would used to say that like the Atlanteans in mythology had superpowers and um, like people that believe in conspiracy theories think that ancient humans along with Atlanteans all had like telekinesis and telepathy and could talk to each other Mm -hmm. other with their minds and shit and we lost that along the way or... Or, like, after the flood or something. Like, dude, it's all kinds of crazy bullshit. So, yeah. Uh, Madame Blavatsky, uh, this is another, like, prominent figure in conspiracy theory thought. Again, everything she ever said was complete bullshit. But she called the Atlanteans the fourth root race, whatever the fuck that means. I'm sure there's a reason out there, but... uh, Anyway, um, the Nazis really... They liked this root race idea bullshit as well. Although... Blavatsky's not, not necessarily a Nazi, but there is some crossover. So, yeah, yeah they they like some of the shit she was talking about, but and like one of the things that they those two disagreed on again, obviously complete bullshit. But she said the Atlanteans were olive skinned people. That's what she believed. So not Nordic super hmm. race, you know, right. bullshit that it, that the Nazis believed in. The Nazis were like, never mind. Yeah. Forget this Atlantis. She quest. thought that the the Atlanteans were the ancestors of Native Americans, Mongolians, and and M- M- Malayans is what it says. Hmm. Um, so yeah. All right. So then, of course, Edgar Casey again. Um, he thought the Atlanteans were giants, <laughs> ten or twelve feet in okay. stature, mm-hmm. and well proportioned throughout. Um, Blavatsky also <laughs> thought they were giants. This is uh, the common ground here. And some conspiracy theori- hmm. theorists link this to the Nephilim because doesn't every fucking conspiracy theory go back to the fucking Nephilim? People love this idea of the Nephilim. <laughs> Can you expand a little bit on that for those who don't know what that is? Okay, so there are mysterious beings or people mentioned in the, in the Hebrew Bible, large and strong, mm-hmm. The, the word Nephilim is loosely translated as giants, but some Bibles left, it's left untranslated in some Bibles, and they just call them Nephilim. Um, but if it is translated fully, maybe it's translated into giants, I guess? Straight into giants? Maybe. Um, some mm-hmm. traditional Jewish expo- explanations interpret them as fallen angels, and it just shows up in, like, the Nephilim have a lot of crossover with the conspiracy theories that, like, are... Uh, the ancient aliens and and all that like uh, they mm-hmm. th- these giants came down and have sex with with uh, the daughters of men or what or whatever that's how they describe it by the way and right. uh, that's what causes the Illuminati I don't know it's like it's dude just like comics the conspiracy theory shit is like complicated and full of <laughs> yeah. just insane stuff I mean mm-hmm. yeah I'm kind of butchering this part of the Nephilim, but look it up. N-E-P-H-I-L-I-M. I mean, it's, a, it's a part of the Bible, but there's a lot of, like, just extraneous conspiracy theory shit involved with them for some reason. So, so gotcha. yeah. Cool. Okay. So now let's uh, have a palate cleanser and go over, just very briefly, Plato's Atlanteans. The, the original. original, the OG Atlanteans. Right. Okay. So Plato described them as simply humans who lived on a particularly fertile island continent before it sank. Makes sense. And Because he's mainly doing the origin story, right? Yeah. Yeah. The gods got yeah. mad and that's what happened. It might have been just a fucking, you know, um, cautionary tale on his part. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And uh, it says, uh, although as the royal family were direct descendants of the god Poseidon, they may have had some divine blood and as such may have inherited various divine powers. So I believe this is, this is trying to say that the Atlanteans had divine powers from Poseidon and Atlant- Plato's yeah, saying this? Atlanteans royal family 
Huh. So even from the very beginning, Plato's like, yeah, they got powers. So anyway, and then continues Seems going. Seems like it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. That's cool. Please correct us in the comments if we're wrong on any of these points, but that's the, uh, that's the mm -hmm. information I got now. Okay. Now we head into our final section, Ben. Any thoughts before we, uh, before we head into it? Uh, uh, the fact that Plato said that they got powers from the gods is definitely also something I did not know. So that's if that's awesome. directly con connected to Poseidon, it makes sense, I guess, right? If Poseidon, yeah. And if Pos Especially Poseidon's connected to their royal their family, underwater. family. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So the last section, Ben, is Atlantis in metaphor. Okay. Eh. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Historian James Rahm believes Plato created the story of Atlantis to convey some of his philosophical theories. He said he was dealing with a number of issues, themes, that run throughout his work, he says. His ideas about divine versus human nature, ideal societies, and gradual corruption of human society. These ideas are all found in many of his works. Atlantis was a different vehicle to get at some of his favorite themes. And uh, Atlantis is similar to Krypton. It's a city that fell. Krypton is a planet that fell. They have, True. They're, they're very similar in this regard. I wonder if Krypton was influenced by Atlantis. I don't know. I never heard that. Just wondering. I'm just thinking out loud there. But uh, mm -hmm. they're metaphorically very similar. Okay? Uh, both advanced civilizations as well. So uh, another one was uh, there's a... It could also be used as a metaphor for something no longer attainable. For the American poet Edith Willis Lynn Forbes, 1865 to 1945, the lost Atlantis stands for the idealization of the past. The present moment can only be treasured once that is realized. And finally, Ben, the British historian and novelist H.G. Wells put it best okay. when he once observed, there is magic in names, and the mightiest among these words of magic is Atlantis. It is as if this vision of a lost culture touched the most hidden thought of our soul. Final thoughts, Ben. Oh, damn. <laughs> Was not expecting H.G. Wells to, to wrap this up. Expect it, the unexpected, but... Benatavius. <laughs> no, this is definitely a world of fascination for a lot of for a lot of people over the past century or so. So I'm not surprised that it landed in the comics, but there's so much more to it than you know, I hate to say it's so much more to it than the comics, <laughs> considering we're superhero stuff. You should this know, is, but <laughs> this is most of the shit we cover. Like, it, it, this is the reaction. This is a lot deeper than I thought. You know what I mean? This is like every every yeah. topic we cover. So yeah, this is now a role reversal, not just in you taking over, but also role reversal where I'm the one where I'm like, this is deeper than I thought. When usually I'm the one who gets that, I'm the one who gets that yeah, reaction yeah, yeah. when I cover Batman yeah. stuff. So with this, I'm like, oh okay, like, but it makes a lot of sense given. This has been around for centuries, and, and people have all sorts of ideas of what it means, as we talked about with the metaphors, or what happened, or why it's why it was in the ocean, or how it fell in the first place, or if it's still around. So I think that it's it's a great avenue to explore for fiction, and I can see why people keep going to that well every time. I think so, and we've I've said it before. I'll say it again. I'm a huge fan of something that people think is dumb. I mean, some people like comic books or for kids right. or whatever and that thing mm -hmm. goes all the way back around to being deep mythology entrenched in human history uh and you know telling stories is some is is one of the first things we did after we created language uh of course mm -hmm. we were probably telling stories with proto languages or something we have to get Sh dr schreier back on to talk about that maybe but but you know what i mean right. the point is telling stories and making myths are just very deep in, 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 in the human psyche and comic books mm -hmm. are just another facet of that and that's what makes it fun again that's why it's superhero stuff you should know because it's, it's, it's all related to kind of deeper aspects of, of, of our history and 
and and everything else. Like, why are they so popular? Because it hits a it hits a certain um, a deep thing in a lot of us. So 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 yeah, I, I'm a you know it's fun. Like it's just it's just fun. Mm-hmm. So so yeah. Um, again, thank you, Doctor Schreier, for coming on. It was it's always a pleasure, and uh, we'll have her on again at some point in the future, I'm sure. And uh, that has been basically it. That is superhero stuff you should know. All right, we have a few fan comments for you guys. So first off is Sneaky Thief with no A. Uh, Sneaky Thief commented on our interview with Wally Wingert, the voice of the Riddler in the Arkham game, saying, quote, I will be really sad. Uh, I will really be sad if there's not another game where Riddler annoys the shit out of me <laughs> while I'm collecting too many trophies. So that so the Riddler true. trophies have become kind of the poster boy for um, annoying shit to collect in a video game. <laughs> you know, like they, they have it in every video game really these yeah. days. But that that's the one people bring up. Have you seen the? There were some memes going around after the release of the, the uh, Robert Pattinson trailer for Batman, where they're just like, "And this movie, Batman's going to be hunting after Riddler trophies the whole fucking time." I have not seen that, but if there's any mention of it, I will once again stand, in the actual movie stand up in the theater and applause. Yes, yes. yes. So uh, that's awesome. Thank you, Sne- Sneaky Thief, for that. Uh, next comment is from Mark Johnson on our Themyscira deep dive, the counterpart to this episode. Uh, Mark Johnson said, quote, found this channel yesterday after listening to the Aronofsky Batman script breakdown, and I haven't stopped listening to your videos since. Awesome channel, guys. Thanks, Mark. Thank you for that, uh, man. That's awesome. Uh, they, that Ar- Aronofsky script is still one of our favorites to dive into. Yeah, that was wild. Uh, Ezra West had a couple comments on our Unlimited What episode on Batman Returns and the script there, but I'll pick out this one. Uh, Ezra says, quote, I like how they skipped the Grayson tragedy. So he's talking about the Sam Ham script, Mm -hmm. uh, I believe, where Robin was already a street kid. He was already an orphan at that time. So Ezra says, I like how they skipped the Grayson tragedy and we meet Dick a a year or a few months after. He probably ran away from his foster home or never even got picked up and has been living on the streets. Whatever the case, it adds to how horrible of a place Gotham is is and it shows a parallel to bruce two kids whose families are murdered one gets to grow up in a mansion and the other is homeless that's an interesting point yeah that's cool that's good no notes i agree no notes (laughs) we agree ezra thanks for thanks for listening in so those are the three comments back to you andrew okay so thank you for those comments and now a thank you to our patreon supporters who are shasta leom o jose arrocha super inframan Douglas P, Dan D, Aaron Willett, Nick Noah, Jesse E, Jeffrey R, Sketchcraft, Scott V, Yuli, and our other supporters, Spark Geddon, STCT Productions, Robert Schumann, Kuki Noms, Matt Herring, Elijah B, Shamrock Balls, Ian H, Walter the Wobot, John Wells, and Rye Guy. Any new ones? That's it, right? One more I'd like to add. Thank you on Instagram to the user comic.capital. Thank you very much for your uh, support. And uh, definitely check out that page if you haven't already. Go to Instagram comic uh, period capital and a ton of great superhero material. Yes, thank you for that. Um, ben was was handled, uh, was talking with you about that. And uh, thank you, uh, Ben. And um, what was the account again? I'm sorry. Comic Capital. Comic Capital, yes. Um, that did, um, you know, help us out a little bit. So, yeah, that, that was awesome. Thank you for that. All right. So, uh, please join the Shasta Army. That's the $1 tier that gets you a shout-out on the show. And then the $5 tier, you it's a it's the bonus Patreon feed. So, you get a whole other show, deeper dives. If you thought this shit was deep, going even deeper. We're going under Atlantis. <laughs> we're going, to, we're the going aqu- into hell. We're going to the Aqua Cave. <laughs> the subterranean tunnels and shit. Um but yeah, we go deeper on that show, and it's five dollars a month. Cancel any time. It, it's almost like a, a little bit over a dollar a episode, really. So, um, you know, uh, check it out. And that is uh, Patreon.com/slash Superhero Stuff Pod. And we have uh, merch. Get your Ben Man mug. Get your Indeed Wizard 
shirt or whatever, uh, we have it on there. It's superhousepod.redbubble.com. Also on tpublic.com slash user slash superhousepodcast5000. Also, superhero stuff pod.threadless.com. And we have uh, all kinds of stuff on there. Uh, the artwork, the Ben Man and the Indeed Wizard artwork is by Wolfie, Wolfie Cruz. Please leave us a review on iTunes. And also, uh, please record us some audio of something and then send that to superhero stuff or superhouse podcast at gmail.com and we will use that on the show it doesn't have to be anything like your own sketch or anything it can just be hey love the show guys anything like that super simple doesn't matter and uh we will use it on the show yeah uh, and uh yeah and then please animate our sketches if you got the gumption if you got the gusto please you can, we will allow you to use our sketches, our audio sketches for your animation. Just please put a hashtag at the bottom somewhere through the entirety of the video. Can be in the corner, small text, doesn't matter. Just as long as it's there in the video itself. And uh, let us know if you do that, because that would be awesome. We have gotten at least one person to contact us about that, so maybe we'll see that in the future. We'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh... Yeah, I'm Thunderwolf Drew on Instagram and Twitter, and I am uh, check out thunderwolflives.com and also Thunderwolf Lives on YouTube. My Japanese-related content, Japanese language, culture, religion, and video games stuff is there. And that is it, Ben. You can follow us on Twitter at Superhouse Pod. You can also follow us on Instagram at Superhero Stuff Pod. Uh, we're on Vero now, so the Snyder fans out there who are also on Vero, please follow us at Superhero Stuff Pod over there. We've just started an account, and uh, we would love to sort of pop in and ask Zack Snyder a question at some point. Uh, my website is at benwanwriter.com. My YouTube channel is in the description below. There is more stuff coming, trust me. And uh, <laughs> the website for the upcoming children's comic that I did, Early Bird, is at earl-e-bird.com, where you can order that. My personal Instagram is at benwanwriter. And my cat's Instagram, my son, is Alfie Pennyworth Cat. He's just realized that he is the pet and I am the owner today. Uh, so in, along those lines, though, <laughs> we have a few affiliates. We have Whiskerbox and BarkBox. So if you have either a cat or a dog and you want to get them a nice gift box from month to month, I believe, then you can go and check that out. That is at superhousepod.com slash shop. You can also check out on that site. We have links to eBay, links to Amazon for all sorts of different merchandise you can get, including the Aquaman issue that Andrew was talking about earlier. Yeah, that it's a it's the the Atlantis Chronicles by Peter David, famous mm -hmm. uh, uh, run, Aquaman run that he did, and um, yeah. So just a little further explanation. It's it's like the selected curated by us Amazon links. If you buy it from Amazon, if you buy it from that link, it just gives us a little kickback. That's basically it. So that's why we're doing it. And also, of course, all the other affiliate links that we said kind of do the same thing. So, uh, mm -hmm. so yeah, please check that out, superhousepod.com slash shop. You'll see it all there. The eBay link links directly to Batman movie memorabilia, specifically on eBay. So um, if you use that link and buy something that way, um, you know, that would help help out the show as well. So mm -hmm. that is, uh, yeah, that's how that works. So, yeah. Nice. And so, for those of you who are part of that $5 Patreon, this is going to be news to Andrew, but as the deep dive for the week of this release, we decided we've already gone over Justice League War, let's go into the next installment, which happens to be Justice League Throne of Atlantis. Oh, Because we shit. might as well do it on the week of Atlantis, so we're going to dive even further into Atlantis by talking about the Aquaman uh, movie that they made that has a lot of similarities as well to the story of the James Wan movie. And in terms of the main show, well, if you've been keeping track, we've had Batman, we've had Wonder Woman, we've had Flash, we've had Cyborg, and now Aquaman. That leaves the big blue himself, Superman. We are going to do a big finale to this Justice League coverage where we are going to do the death and return of Superman covering the comic, the Zack Snyder movies, the animated movies, all versions in which Doomsday killed Superman and Superman came back to life. We are going to bring them onto the table and ask which one did the story best. Check that out next week. And also, I want you to do us a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about us. <laughs> <laughs>